I came across this interesting paper on solar cycles, the sun, uh, sunspots, and solar motion. It's really short, easy to read, and really interesting. Put the link, obviously. This came out in 2000 uh, by I. Charvatoba. So this was in solar cycle 23. We've now supposedly peaked solar cycle 24. And there's predictions in here for the upcoming cycles, and it's spot on. So it breaks down to 178.7 year basic cycle. Within that, or that's contained within, I guess, an 8,000 year interval, which breaks down to about 2,402 years, right? For a grand cycle, 2,402 years, which that corresponds to the Jupiter heliocenter Barry Center alignment. With Barry Center is the where their mutual orbits are. It's like a little bit in front of the sun. And contained within that also, there's a 370-year exceptional cycle, which we'll talk about. So it's pictures. Love pictures. So if you look at the upper left, 1192 to 1241, those are the years. So it's 50-year ordered, structured trifoil. So what you're looking at here, these loops, it's a 50-year orbit, and it's the orbit of the center of the sun around the center of mass of the solar system. Okay, so the, the center of the crosshairs would be the center of mass of the solar system. And then this is how the center of the sun rotates around that mass. So you could see there's... Um, it's very ordered, repeatable, it's, it's identical, it just rotates. So, so the 50 year ordered pattern from 1192 to 1241, then a transitional period of about 30 or 29 years, and then it gets completely chaotic and random for, uh, 70, 80 years, 80 years. And that's the wolf minimum. And then the transitional period of 20 and a half years and then you go back into the trifoil from 1370 to 14, 19 and a half, 11 and a half years transition. And then it goes spore minimum, another uh, random, chaotic, not predictable pattern. And then back into the trifoil. And this continues as shown here. So the Dalton minimum. And then trifoil from 1906 to 1955, and then from 1985 to 2040, so we're in that currently, obviously, we're in the center of that. And then the next trifoil is predictable. You know, this is a repeatable pattern, so they know it's going to be between 2085 and 2134, and that's what it's going to look like. This also influences directly sunspot cycle length. Okay, so you have the years, 8 years, 10 years, 12 years, and 14 years, and then the solar cycles on the x-axis. So starting from 0 to 4, um, that dashed line there is at 10 years, because that interval with the vertical dashed lines is the same orbital pattern, identical orbital pattern as from 15 to 19 Right, with the other vertical dashed lines, and you can see those are all at exactly 10 years. And it's possible that, you know, the earlier data, because that was from like the 1700s, you know, maybe it was just data error or, you know, unreliable observations, and it really was 10 year solid across. So um, when you get out of the ordered system, the sun spike, sun cycle, sunspot cycle length varies. All right, so now you have this, and it's going to overlay again with the orbital pattern there. So you can see, exactly identical. All right, it's just, it rotates around. So the disordered sections of orbit have varied sun spike, sunspot cycle length periods compared to a solid 10-year period based on the, the trifoil orbit. And then also, you can, or they have, overlaid uh, sunspot number. So how strong the cycles are. Right, so you can see, you know, letter A and A1 there correspond to trifoil, correspond to 10-year uh, 
sunspot. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> sunspot cycle lengths, and you know, increased sunspot activity. It's all related here. Now they were talking about a grand cycle of two thousand four hundred and two years, so they went back and modeled those years, and you can see it's identical. So instead of having a trifoil and then random. You get trifoil, superfoil, trifoil, superfoil, trifoil. All right, so the randomness is kicked out of the system. So you go from uh, 158 BC to 200 AD. So it's a normal cycle. So there should be interspaced randomness. But instead of the randomness, you get superfoils. So it ends up being... Uh, extremely stable period of high solar activity. Predictable high solar activity of constant 10-year solar cycles. And they also had, uh, from California, um, carbon-14 data going back to 4,800 years. So they overlaid this also. And you can see during the periods of you know, the, the 2,402 year cycles, you can see they're, they're pretty constant, uh, carbon 14 ratio. So just another, you know, proof in their claim and the way it works, tree rings and corals mapped together. You can see where those, it's funny where they end up on that sine wave, right? It's right before the peak, right before the middle, right before the trough. And then the next one predicted out in the future is going to be, again, right before the middle. Don't know what it means, but that's there. <laughs> so I guess there's a little little lag time on our end, I guess. So go, moving from pictures back to words, unfortunately. So saying, so you can compute it in advance. Uh, we're going to be in that disordered orbit till about 2035, uh, which is similar to the second half of the 19th century. The sun should develop, remember they wrote this in 2000 or 1999, so before everything that's happened recently. The sun should develop lower solar cycles of variable length. Um, the initial development of solar cycle 23 now in its third year confirms this for the present cycle. And 24 has been lower and more variable. And then they stuck this paragraph, this is the very end, the last paragraph of the conclusion. It's, this is great. It really doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the paper, but fits in completely to current theories. So the individual solar spheres must surely respond to solar motion in distinct ways, provoking on the boundary layers a solar dynamo. The thin layer at the boundary between radiative and convective zones, where a shear flow has been found by the satellites, is likely to be the place where the solar dynamo operates. The results indicate that solar dynamo that was long sought in the solar interior operates more likely from the outside by means of varying planetary configurations, as has been shown by Charvatova, same author as, as this paper. The solar motion could aid predictions also for terrestrial phenomenon, including climate. Yeah, last paragraph, just threw it in, wasn't mentioned anywhere else in the paper, but thought that was very interesting. So I guess not to bury the lead, just more evidence that we are already in slash entering a solar minimum. Nah, I'm just messing with you. It's a little bit of carbon dioxide that we're putting in the atmosphere. Don't worry. It's going to heat up. Everything will be fine.